Hey, listeners, welcome back to Daddy Dialogues. This is Dr. Eden Hamowitz, Dad E, and I am super excited to be here with special guests. Unfortunately, Daddy Fields can't make it today. It's a very sad day. Uh, so it's going to be me and these awesome guests. We're going to kill it today, right? Absolutely. Yay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very much, yes. So, allow me to introduce Baby Nim and Jack. Hi, all. Hello. 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 Uh, so, they are involved in a polyamorous couple. They are ABDL identified. And I'm very eager to learn more about your experiences together separately um, as part of this unique community that we are all members of. I wonder if we can just start by having you all individually just tell like a two minute story or less about um, how you landed in ABDL, you know, when it first all began, how'd you know, and when, and, uh, you know, where you find yourself today as ABDL. Who wants to start? Well, I suppose I'll start us off then. So it started, I was about four or five years old. Mommy and Daddy had a new baby, so I stole a few diapers. Oh, no, who could imagine? Anyhow. Uh, very uh, un unusual. I know. A very unusual story. So this is Nim, right? Nim. This is me, Nim. Nim. Yes. Yeah. I should announce myself to the world. Hello, everyone. Yay! Anyway, uh, jump qu a decade or so. Mm -hmm. A little less than a decade. And we are in puberty. 08 recession hit. We were in a small uh, Class C RV. Had just lost our home. It was not mm. fun. I was mm -hmm. sleeping next to my baby brother and going through puberty. Uh, I was not getting the love and attention that my new baby brother was getting. And mm -hmm. guess what? In bed at night, there were convenient wet wipes and the smell of powder and diapers right next to me. So I'm mm -hmm. sure some association must have formed there. Uh, mm -hmm. Skip past a couple of years, we got some makeshift diapers, some uh, stories, some very fun art that I was looking at. Very fun, very fun. A uh, close shave and a uh, very uncomfortable talk with my father. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to get into that at this point in time. <laughs> Skipping later. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go all the way to adult life, university, uh -huh. meeting uh -huh. people, munches, exploring the ABDL community in itself, buying supplies. Mm -hmm. I have real diapers, and they are wonderful. So and, you're very active in the community then? Uh, quite active, yes. I go to... Not the most, most active, but I go to ABDL munches or events uh, on a monthly, bi-monthly basis. Mm -hmm. And then okay. I also have my little sister, my puppy friend who I visit, and mm -hmm. who I met uh, a month ago online mm -hmm. and met in person just a week ago. Mm -hmm. My baby and my mister, who are in this call right now. Yay! I'm so delighted to have all of you here. It's like an honor, really. I just, I have a lot of uh, appreciation for what you do out there in the Twitterverse, and uh, it's awesome. Um, okay, uh, who wants to go now? Oh, baby's going last, so I guess that means uh, daddy. Yeah, I'll go. Um... Mm -hmm. So, hi, I'm Jack. I'm baby's daddy. I'm her boyfriend. I'm her caregiver. Mm -hmm. And for me, things really started when I want to I wanna say I was about six is about the earliest I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, I was a twin, so I grew up with a twin sister. Um, 
so I didn't really have the whole younger sibling to steal diapers from story. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, it was more, I struggled with potty training. I had to wear some form of protection up until I was about eight. And the, the love for them developed. And, uh, and I, once I hit puberty, I started thinking back and I was like, man, I want to go back to that. You know, Mm. I want to have, I want to have, you know, that, that, that nice feeling again, that, that safety, you know, and more recently, you know, I mean, I've had, I had some close calls, you know, I've had, I've also, I also had a really awkward talk with my dad. Um, more recently, as of a couple years ago, I got my first, you know, I got my first pack of actual ABDL diapers. Mm-hmm. Um, and more recently is where things have been really picking up for me. Uh, it's been about a year now. We're coming up on our year anniversary, but uh, baby moved in with me mm-hmm. about a year ago. August oh. 5th will be our one year. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that time, it's really, it's really been, it's really been nice because we've been able to just be ourselves and just explore this, this interest with mm-hmm. each other, you know, without fear of judgment or anything, you know, uh, and because she is medically incontinent, we do have a large stash of diapers and just changing supplies and all sorts of things just all around our apartment right now. Wonderful. So, hi, my name is Baby. You might know me better online as either Vampers, Unpotty Trained, Stoner Baby Core, or uh, Goo Goo Ganja. Um, so, my story is a little bit more deep. Um, I've always described myself as a lifer in the community, as I most of my early memories um, are of me wanting in some way, shape, or form to go back to being a baby again. Um, due to, um, my autism, I have an issue called, uh, poor interoception, which means that my body and my brain, when it comes to the signals that my body needs, uh, for example, hunger, thirst, temperature regulation, arousal, as well as, um, bathroom needs has always been either delayed or just outright, like completely defunct. So I've been having... Uh, issues with at least mild incontinence for most of my life. I've also been actively mm-hmm. age regressing since the age of three due to trauma. I do not want to go into detail. Um, my earliest memories of wanting to actually actively go back to baby things like diapers, pacifiers, and t- baby toys and all that was age four. And this desire never really went away. I was originally an only child. And then my mother remarried and I became the baby of the family. And then my mom and my stepdad had a kid of their own, which is my little sister. So I became the middle child. So I got to experience a little bit of everything. I will admit that I did steal uh, a few of my little sister's diapers when she was still in them. I was like 10 and I was extremely skinny and I still fit in them for some reason. Um, When... When I was 13, um, I was hospitalized uh, due to a mental health episode, and it was there during computer time that I stumbled across the ADDL community. I found sites like Sissy Kiss, uh, Diaper Pale Friends, uh, Daily Diapers, A-Disc, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and from there, I would read a lot of stories. I never really interacted with anybody because I was, you know, a minor. But I did my research, I I scoured forums, I read stories, I looked at artwork. Once I turned 18 is when I officially declared myself, Mm -hmm. you know, an ABDL. That's when I actually started, you know, interacting with the community. I made a Twitter Mm -hmm. um, at age 19. That's when I made most of my ABDL social media. My Twitter is my most active and also my oldest uh, social media that I still own to where somehow... Awesome. I became one of the biggest names in the community through Twitter. Um, living with, and I've been living in different places back and forth for the past year and a half. Um, moved out of my mom's place, had an awkward talk with her, but she essentially, sorry, 
she essentially told me that, you know, she's known about it for years. She's very mm -hmm. open-minded as long as, you know, she doesn't have to be involved and I take care of everything with it. She didn't care. So for the last, like, a uh, couple of years uh, living with her, I was able to walk around, like, in a diaper or in a onesie okay. and it with, like, with a pacifier hanging down. It was very freeing. Um, I moved, ac moved across the country um, mm -hmm. and eventually ended up uh, moving in with my daddy, with Jack, um, almost a year ago. And from there, he has taken on the full daddy role. I do not have to change my own diapers. Uh, he helps me get dressed. He helps me shower. He just yeah. makes me feel small, and I could not be more appreciative. Nim entered my life recently, and she has definitely taken on more of the mommy role, especially since, for lack of better words, she has breastfed me. Awesome. Okay, so this is a perfect segue into the first part of the conversation that I had hoped to have. Uh, let me preface all of it by saying, you know, I really just treasured some of the tweets that you put out there, uh, baby, about your experience with daddy. And, uh, you know, specifically the, I was just so evident, you know, with one tweet, you know, this is a very loving relationship, which I can understand immediately you know i you know it when you see it kind of thing and uh this is just invaluable and you know i, I haven't really met I, i've met a bunch of abdl couples at this point but uh i haven't really met any that i would say like wow the love is just blossoming and blooming everywhere and uh i just um you know like a few and uh so it's just really refreshing to see that and i'm so curious personally and professionally to learn more about uh, how this relationship with daddy and baby works, and also how the experience works with uh, Nim uh, involved in this unit, uh, and anyone else that is participating as well. I, I, I'm eager to hear about it, and especially from the ABDL perspective. All right, I guess I'll, I guess I'll start us off. I mean, First off, I want to say thank you. That really put a smile on my face. I do I do try my best to make baby happy. Mm -hmm. Um when when we first started out, I was between jobs. This was last August. Um mm -hmm. and she moved in and I told myself, "Okay, this is someone who, you know, has been bouncing around the country. She, you know, She's been through a lot, and I my my only goal was to make it like was to just open my home and just make it a safe space for her. Mm. I I just wanted I wanted to make her happy in any way I could to make the transition easier because I know I know she was going through a lot and mm -hmm. flying halfway across the country to live with someone you met two weeks ago is a big risk and it was a big mm -hmm. risk for me too. Mm -hmm. Because I had I had family telling me, oh, this is just going to be a person that's going to take advantage of you, you know, mm. and, you know, they're just they're just going to be, you know, mooching off your goodwill. And I was like, no, like, I'm going to prove you guys wrong. Like, this is it's, good for you. It's, yeah, it's going to be good, you know, mm. and. Let me, let me, I just want to pause here and make a quick comment that this is so familiar that that language uh very often outsiders to the ABDL experience don't really understand how this dynamic works. And actually, yeah, there is a huge risk involved in getting into a relationship with any ABDL because at some point you have to make that risk and take a leap of faith because there's no role models to like really learn from. So yeah, there is like some measure of risk involved, but people often interpret that from the outsider point of view as... Um, Oh, the daddy is like creepy and manipulative and uh, just taking advantage of your youth and vigor. And, uh, you know, the baby just wants to, you know, be, have a sugar daddy and, you know, whatever. Uh, there's also all sorts of misinterpretations. I mean, we're not even talking about that. Any, if there is any, or, you know, if there's any age gap that, that sort of magnifies all of that. I don't know which is except that applies to you, but um, it doesn't matter. Point is, Language like that is very common. So yeah, go on. Yeah, and I mean, uh, 
when when she moved in all i all i wanted was you know for her to feel comfortable here because i knew it was going to be it was going to be new it was going to be you know just she's in a completely different part of the country mm-hmm. and you know she's she's really far from home and she's with someone she's you know she's just been talking to for like 2 weeks mm-hmm. so you know she moved in and we got to know each other and we found that we just really clicked we clicked mm-hmm. really well mm-hmm. and and I mean, a few weeks in, a few weeks in, we were talking and I was like, and she, she was getting all, all flustered and everything. And I was like, do you, do you have a crush on me? You know, I was like, do you, do you like me? And, and she was like, she was like, yeah, a little bit. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is, this is the cutest thing ever. And it kind of just blossomed from there. Yeah, I know. That's why I love love. I can't. I can't. Yeah. It kind of just blossomed from there. For, forgive me if forgive me if I I make little noises. I can't help it. It really just blossomed from there, and I've I've kind of just <laughs> tried to tried to hold true to that initial initial feeling of I want to make her happy. I want to make her yeah. comfortable. I want to keep her safe, you know. And and here we are, you know, coming up on a year later, and and, and we're still we're still going strong. I love it. I mean, I want to just say here that, uh, I mean, it resonates for me uh, on a number of levels, but one thing that particularly stands out, I don't know if you've identified it as such, or you've put words to it, what you described like this, but to me, when I hear what you're saying about um, saying, you know, I, I want to make baby happy, I want to give her the safe space that she deserves, and, uh, you know, you made this decision at some point not fully knowing where it would go. Uh, and honestly, I believe that it goes beyond like courage and uh, like a leap of faith. I also believe that it's um, making a clear commitment and sticking to it. And like you renew this commitment every day, every day that you get up and change your diapers and be your family. I mean, that's just literally what it is, is a commitment. And uh, I think people often forget how important commitment is. Whether it's, Whatever the sort of sexual monogamy, non-monogamy structure is, uh, it's so important to be able to um, make a commitment of some kind that is <clears throat> based on some kind of principle like that. Yeah. Thank you. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes. I suppose I'll go next then. Yeah, please. Uh, me and Baby basically interacted on Twitter. She posted something about, I really, really need some breast milk. And I said something like, oh, well, I've got you covered. I make milk. What'd she say? She, she needed she needed breast milk? Breast milk. She's, yeah. Oh, breast from the boobs. I'm a little hard of hearing. <laughs> yes. Trans <Okay>. girl. <laughs> vegan. Locally produced. Organic. Breast milk. Yeah, I make the stuff. Awesome. Anyhow, uh, we got in contact, slid into each other's DMs, were chatting on Discord, and we're like, yes, this needs to happen. And we mm-hmm. planned a trip, which was mm-hmm. just like last week, a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amazing. And Wonderful. So, I get on the bus all the way over to them, and mm-hmm. a pretty long bus ride, but it was worth it. Uh, I get there, I see baby, it's all hugs and kisses and cuddles and misters there. Oh. A little standoffish at first, but then again, I was in the car in the back seat, and the music was pretty loud. <laughs> Uh-huh. But we get there, cuddles, exploring a little bit of breastfeeding, mm-hmm. and she had some mouth sores, so she couldn't ex- enjoy the experience fully and had a bit of anxiety, but it was oh so cute. And when she mm-hmm. latched on, and finally she got a few drops, mm. it was just great. That oxytocin really flows through you. And it was just comfy and cozy and bond. And oh, she's so little and just the most precious little baby ever. I mean, (laughs) she is certified as 
what the dumbest baby on Twitter, the babyest baby oh, on Twitter, yeah. all of them. <laughs> In a sweet. Yes, and then we got to playing and watching ghost uh, music videos and stuff. That was like by that. a that was by a contest. And then I put on a pair of cat ears, and baby's like, "Oh my god, you have to show daddy!" And so I go out, and I see him there. And I start mm -hmm. making my kitty noises. It doesn't pick up too well on the headphones, but I'll make a cue for you. Oh, please. Oh. Listen to those folks. Listen, Nim, Nim, you have one of the most beautiful voices, even in cat speak. Yeah, it does not like my purring with these headphones. Okay. But that is a shame. You'll just have to see it in person if we ever do meet. Yeah. Definitely. As likely or unlikely as that is to be. Who knows? Oh, it's very possible. Change. There's always Capcom. Capcom. Mm -hmm. Yes. In any case. Yeah. Go on. Now, Jack, baby's daddy, is my mister because mm. he was fawning uh -huh. all over me and petting and oh, so much love and affection. And I was nuzzling mm -hmm. my head against mister. And then we just had a great old time from there. Uh, Love it. Lots of cuddles, sweet little times together, baby and mommy, and I'm kitten and mister, and, <laughs> and fun awesome. shower times, and coddling the baby while making out, and all sorts of fun stuff. <laughs> so... so the circumstances that led to me being with daddy were because I've been flying or I'm, I've been like moving around the country. Um, I never really had any stable housing. And I thought that I had something stable when I was in Maine living with my ex-girlfriend mm -hmm. and her mom, because her mom originally told me that because, you know, she and I got along and, you know, I wasn't, you know, rocking the boat or anything that, if I was mm -hmm. actively trying to get on disability, which I am now mm -hmm. also, um, that she would allow me to stay there until I could figure out something regarding affordable housing. And that was all fine and good. That's how things were going to go. Even though the situation between me mm -hmm. and my ex-girlfriend ex started to become untenable. Like we had all, not hostile, but at the same time, it's like I was sleeping on the couch, basically. Mm -hmm. Her mom came to me one day and told mm -hmm. me that due to issues regarding the housing situation for her sister and her sister's mm -hmm. kid, who I had met and were very lovely people, um, she had to consider potentially moving them in, which meant that I had 30 days. So I go on Twitter because when I panic, I plan. Um, and I immediately put out a notice saying, I've been given 30 days. I do not know what I'm going to do otherwise. If you're able to put me up, even for just a temporary period, please let me know. And I got a few hits, um, but the two that I actually mm -hmm. honed in on, there was one uh, offer that I got in Pittsburgh, and there was an offer that I got in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And I told both of them, hit me up, and we talk, We talked. I talked with both of them at length for... Uh, the next two weeks. And the thing that made me decide to move in um, to the Green Bay location is that he had a fully furnished room because the mm -hmm. apartment is pre-furnished. Mm -hmm. He had a fully furnished room ready to go because his sister was literally moving out at the same time to go to college. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the room in Pittsburgh, there was a room available, but it was not furnished. I would essentially either be sleeping on a couch in the living room or the floor. And even they told me that the Green Bay option was going to be my better bet. So I reach out to my friend who uh, let me use five miles originally to leave Georgia. And they gave me the five miles necessary to uh, be able to fly to Detroit and then to Green Bay because I had to make a layover. So he picks me up. And we mm. had no original intention of getting into a relationship. Like, when I first moved in, he was operating under the assumption that he was homosexual. Yeah. So this was essentially going to be like, you know, like a queer platonic type thing at best. Otherwise, we were just going to be friends and roommates. And I would have been fine with that. I lived with a roommate for over eight years. 
But we basically took that first month where he was between jobs because he had some money saved up. We took that as a time to essentially see, you know, if we clicked. Mm -hmm. And let me just say that I have never clicked better with somebody in my life. He eventually opened up to uh, allowing me to call um, to call him my boyfriend and he to call me his girlfriend. Um, he, we started, you know, sleeping in the same bed together and, you know, he's introduced me to his family as his girlfriend and it's been nice. Um, and as Nim said, she entered, she entered the dynamic very recently. You know, the the way I came about this particular episode was that I connected with Nim in some random space on Twitter, uh, Glooby Blinkers, and, uh, it was just so (laughs) interesting what she was discussing as far as, you know, her experience being a trans woman and um, the, <laughs> I mean, you, you should explain, like, you know, it was, it was something about the experience of the benefits of being ABL as far as being in such a highly politicized bathroom environment in the U.S. Yeah, I'd love to hear about it. So, first of all, diapers provide comfort and security and... It helps a lot with any gender dysphoria regarding those parts, uh, but also they're just safe. Like bathrooms for trans people can be very scary, especially if mm-hmm. there's fluidity or uh, you're not identifying as a binary gender or you're in the transition process because then you always have to choose which restroom feels safe that's right yeah i understand that a lot of times in the united states depending on where you live in there's no safe answer (laughs) so if you already like diapers well even if you don't already Uh like them uh they would become more appealing just because of the fact that they're safe and then you realize that you're they're comfortable and also for many trans femme individuals or transgender women uh who are on hormones if they're taking spironolactone one of the very common side effects is you need to pee a whole lot more and you're quite thirsty so having to use restrooms more often and also needing pee more and restrooms not being safe diapers are just a win and we go to the oh okay i'll keep it succinct Absolutely. The third thing, well, for transgender individuals, they lost a lot of the childhood growing up that they would have experienced as their authentic gender. And so part of the regression that comes along with diapers and, you know, just ABDL in general is getting to relive that and restart in a more firming way and experiencing when we're older what we never got to. So my experience with uh, being trans and ABDL, so I knew that I wasn't like most other, you know, boys when I was very young, around the same time that I knew that I was into diapers and baby stuff and whatnot. Um, I didn't realize that I really wanted to be a girl until I was in middle school. Um, And... I had a bully that basically got a hold of my diary and uh, spread rumors around the school, and I just never lived them down until I graduated. Um, It wasn't until I was in my 20s that I attempted to transition originally, Mm -hmm. and I kind of hit a lot of roadblocks. Um, My mom was a little hostile to it in the beginning, uh, mostly because I've always had issues with identity and um mm-hmm. that i my identity was not constantly flip-flopping because one i was in the wrong body two i wasn't able to live as i needed to live so i didn't really know who i was 
at that point. So I was constantly flipping back and forth, but I digress. Um, so I, that transition didn't last long. Um, and unfortunately, I recloseted myself and I stayed in the um, I, I was it was just a very bad time. I was a very bad person, et cetera, et cetera. Muzzle time. But eventually I was able to kick him out and I came out as trans once more when I was 25. It's been five years now. Wow. Um, also, today is my one year. One year is, sorry, today is my four-year HRT anniversary. I've been on hormones for four years now. Um, a, a big sign that my transition and being ABDL were uh, connected is that when I regressed and when I played, I was never a baby boy. It never felt right. I've always been a baby girl in little space. Um, and as my body has changed, um, so has, you know, my perception as a baby girl by the community. Obviously, they saw me as a girl, but I look like a baby girl now. So, um, like, my following grew as I started to grow tits. Um, and it's definitely a very organic thing for me mm -hmm. uh, because, I've all, like I said, I've always been a baby girl in little space. Now, when I regress, it's just, it's natural. Like, I don't think of myself as anything but... Um, but I would definitely say, especially Aww. since hormones heighten emotions, um, it's that. very easy now for me to cry. It's easy for me to actually, you know, get emotional when I'm in little space. Daddy will tell you I can get fussy. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I love it, too. <laughs> but he always, you know, regards it, you know, as me, you know, just being a fussy baby. He never takes it personally, which <laughs> is amazing because it's never personal. Um, like, like, I'll always be like, you're dumb, you're, you're stupid, just little things like that. Or like, I want it, just, just little things like that that just come naturally when I'm little. Um, okay. But yeah, um, I'm just I'm perceived uh, as a woman and as a baby girl in the community, like, and, and I so am very happy with that. That you were here to share with me. I wanted to just invite Daddy Jack to speak more about anything that's come up. In the meantime, I know that you had something to say earlier, but we sort of lost that moment. Uh, is there anything you want to throw in before we wrap up? Um, honestly, no. I just, I just wanted to say, like, uh, in regards to baby transitioning, you know, mm -hmm. ever since she got here, I have always viewed her as female, mm -hmm. and when she's little, I do think of her like, like you would a child. Mm -hmm. And it does, it does really help me be able to, you know, love and care for her mm -hmm. in that, in that kind of way, which, you know, does really help because I don't, I don't see her as like an adult pretending to be a baby. I see her as a baby. I'm going to wrap now and just say, again, it's such a pleasure to have all of you. Like, I love talking with you. I can't wait to do it again. We have to do it again. Yes. Good E, Dr. Ethan Hamelvitz, and this is just another episode of Daddy Dialogues. Peace out. Bye.